Welcome back to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. February is Black History Month, and today we're taking an opportunity to salute black history makers that have made a difference right here where we live. Euless Payne Jr. received a Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration from Marquette University in 1978 and a law degree from Marquette University Law School in 1982. He's currently a managing member of Addison Clifton LLC, where he advises on global Global Trade Compliance Solutions. How are you? All right, Andrew, how are you? Thank you for being here, and you have such an inspiring story. I really don't know where to begin, but I think it would be smart to begin uh, where you were born, in Denora, Pennsylvania. Denora, PA. <laughs> so tell us how, in fact, you ended up in Wisconsin. Well, Denora, uh, PA, is a small steel town in south uh, in western Pennsylvania right outside of Pittsburgh about 15 miles south on the Monongahela River mm -hmm. and uh, I was born in a steel family my mother worked in the steel mill during the war my father worked in the mill drove a truck and so the only way really to get out of Denora was either going to the military or having a chance to go to school on a scholarship and I had a chance to come to Milwaukee uh, to attend Marquette on the basketball scholarship. Okay, and your parents were very, very serious about your education. Uh, there's no, no question about it. I'm sure like your parents <laughs> were, right? <laughs> we were a, a generation where the opportunity to go to school uh, was, was there. Mm -hmm. And so it was sort of like, uh, you. this is what you're going to do. And, and even if you didn't go to college, uh, you had to get good grades in high school, good grades in junior high school, and so the expectation was set for me, so I'm very lucky. I'm, Wow. in that case. Yes, indeed. And uh, as I mentioned, you attended undergrad at Marquette, then yes. you went on to Marquette Law School, but you also studied in the Masters of Law program at the University of London. Yes. Uh, how major was that? That was, uh, as, as most things in our lives have an effect on our lives, that mm -hmm. had a great effect on me. Sure. At the time, I was Commissioner of Securities for the state of Wisconsin, running a government agency, but I could tell from the work I did uh, stock and bond offerings, there was more cross-border activity, flow of money. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I thought, I need to learn about that. And what I want to do is get a graduate law degree, study graduate law, but in English, because mm -hmm. it's pretty difficult to study law in another language. So it's either going to Canada or going to England or going to Australia. And the University of London is one of the most renowned uh, universities on the planet. And they had a program that allowed me to basically commute for two years back and forth wow. to the University of London. Wow, and the rest, as they say, is history. So, it's a good thing. Uh, many people will remember you from your Marquette days. Uh, you were a star athlete and a member of the 1977 mm -hmm. NCAA championship team. You also played uh, in the NBA. So, uh, not only did you excel uh, professionally uh, when it came to hitting the books, you were a star athlete as well. What advice do you have for young people? Uh, because I hear kids all the time of course saying I want to be a pro football player pro basketball player what advice do you have for those when it comes to having a plan B well clearly must have a plan B mm -hmm. but pursue your plan A because one thing for me athletics it taught me uh, discipline mm -hmm. practice 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 perform a lot of people can't perform so it taught me not just on the field but to really perform do your job so athletics if that's what you want I say go get it because if you don't really want it and believe it you'll never get there uh -huh. but then you go to plan B so I say no full throttle on plan A <laughs> okay <laughs> live it live it if you believe it live uh, it like but then that. by the way when plan A stops yeah, you must have a plan B and again for me it was always education and whatever the study my folks didn't tell me what to study but they said, make sure you can get paid for it. Mm. So, so I studied business really because I thought, well, with business, I could probably <laughs> get paid, as opposed to sociology. Nothing wrong with that. Right. But it's just said, there are different say, tiers. Look here, right? That's Be true. ready for that. Yeah. So, very, very fortunate for me. Now let's talk about uh, how you were able to break the color barrier at the law firm Foley and Lardner. Uh, usually, it takes about seven to eight years for someone to make partner. Mm -hmm. It took you. Well, Just four well, years. Well, well, no. What happened there? <laughs> Foley's great law firm, and and actually, I came there as a partner. Okay. Okay. So I was at another law firm, and and after I left the commissioner's office, and I went over to Foley, and and it's a great. I mean, the oldest and largest law firm in the state of Wisconsin history. Mm -hmm. A lot of great professionals. 
I was able to become managing partner of the headquarter office here. So I re it was my partners who allowed me to do that, and I learned from them. I uh, worked a lot of hours, mm -hmm. learned a lot about myself. So, so for me, it was fortunate to be in that position to be a part of such a large, historic uh, law firm in the state of Wisconsin. Yes, and you're in the history books as the firm's first African-American managing partner. So uh, if you had any challenges at all, uh, what were some of the challenges you faced? Because let's face it, in some instances, you never deal with uh, color being an issue, but a lot of times in our society, yeah. it does come up as an issue. Well, you know, when I walk into the room, <laughs> They know where I'm from. Yeah, they know, okay. So, but but for me, I'm proud of who I am mm -hmm. and and uh, who I represent because I always remember I do represent, right? Yes. Um, and then it gets to can I perform? And usually, again, from athletics, a lot of folks read something one time, but I find if you read it the second and third time, how much clearer it becomes. Okay. It's like practicing basket shoot 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 <laughs> jump 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 so I found and when I brought that to the practice of law many times the people I was working with they didn't read it three four or five times so I was used to doing things over and over and also getting used to saying that you know I could always be better mm -hmm. so for me um, I let the color be their problem like talk to your psychologist right. about that <laughs> <laughs> but I am who I am right <laughs> right right, I am right. Who I am. but but now can you handle this? Like, what are we talking about? Mm -hmm. What are we doing? So I always focus on execution. I love that. And yeah. just with you saying that, people can take some of that with them and apply it to whatever they're dealing with in their own lives. So thank you for sharing that. And fans of the Brewers, they'll remember. Mm -hmm. I, was it in 2002? 2002. Yeah, yeah, the team was on a downward spiral, even though they were sitting in a brand new stadium and they were looking to do something different, as in hire a new CEO. And you ended up being the man in that situation as well, also breaking a color barrier with Major League Sports. So talk about uh, what that was like. Again, fortunate the creator's been good to me, Andrew, and, yeah. and give me opportunities. Uh, and there was an opportunity there. I, I knew the owners of the Brewers, oh, Foley and Lardner represented the Brewers mm -hmm. uh, and worked with Major League Baseball. And, and I had worked on a stadium project as the stadium authority. So I knew, I knew a bit about what was going on and I really was flattered, totally surprised. But again, once I got asked, I sized it up, talked to my family, prayed on it a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, make sure. Uh, and then took advantage of the opportunity. And I think I, I learned a lot and hopefully as I look back now with the Brewers, uh, some of the same colleagues that I asked to come join me in management are still there, wow. which is very helpful. Uh, the team has continued to improve. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think in the end of the day, uh, while I had my chance, I, I gave a little bit. Hopefully it was positive. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the simple fact that uh, you go down in the history books uh, being uh, one of the first African-American men to be a CEO of a major league franchise is saying enough and it was in 2003 that Sports Illustrated actually named you one of its 101 most influential minorities in sports period so I would yes. say it was a positive experience yeah, I hope so. I <laughs> now hope so. uh, during the time that you uh, took on the position with the Brewers uh, there were many lobbyists pushing to see more minority representation in major league sports. So uh, what advice do you have to young people who, like yourself, uh, had the skills on the basketball court, on the field, whatever the case may be, uh, in taking those skills of knowing a sport to the next level? Well, I would say like most things, Andrea, you know, life is a series of opportunities. Mm -hmm. And the question is, whatever you're doing, like do it well, bring something, a law firm the same way. What is your law post? Why would I hire you? So whatever you're doing, whether it's in front of the camera, behind the camera, mm -hmm. scheduling something, uh, be good at what you do. The second thing is, someone is always watching. For these opportunities that, that, that we talk about here, that's not something I planned, not something I laid out and figured I want that spot. <laughs> But it's a series of opportunities that come about, and the question is, when it comes, are you ready? Are you ready? There it is. C and can you bring it? Like, what's your go-to <laughs> move? What's your go-to move? Let me see it. Okay. I hear, I hear like a coach in Let there. Let me see it. Can you make the free throw or not? Okay. 
So to me, my life has been that way. So just prepare yourself, and when it's there, mm -hmm. take advantage of it. All right, and since we're talking sports, uh, if I correct me if I'm wrong, you were on the board for the Bradley Center yes, for many years. years. And uh, so now here we are, finally at the point where we know there's going to be a brand new Bucks Arena in downtown Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about that? Very happy to see it. Uh, we at the Bradley Center, I was on the board 12 years, I chaired it for 10, mm -hmm. and the land that we held to make sure no development occurred just north of us is going to be a prime site for the new arena. So, yeah. so again, I'm very thankful for the new owners and the commitment from the leadership politically to say we need this for the city. It's not so much for me, because I've been to a lot of games, but it's for uh, young Johnny who may go to one game a year or a concert or or WWE, okay, <laughs> but it's for them. Yeah. And so I'm very helpful and thankful for Senator Cole and for the new owners to say, let's, let's make an investment in our community. Yeah, and it is very going thankful. to definitely make a huge difference, especially no down the line, because the same way people probably felt when the Bradley Center was first built, uh, there's right. gonna be people that'll be able to look back and say they remember when this arena was built when they're yes. talking about building another one in the next it goes that way, but 60 but, or 70 but years. But you think about all the people, <laughs> including yourself, yeah. right, who people got to know and see because that building was there. Mm -hmm. And I think it's not so much exactly, it's not the money, it's, it's a community. They, there's an African uh, saying called, uh, or a term called Ubuntu, which you may know. Ubuntu says, I am who I am because of who we are. Mm. And so those kind of facilities bring people together, together yes, right? Indeed, yes. And they bring people on a certain mission, a certain feeling. You feel bad when you lose, you feel good when you win. So to me, I'm so thankful that someone now who's got the resources says, yeah, we're going to put this right here. Yes, that's a great way to put it. And uh, when you look back, I know you just live your life and you don't really sit back probably and ponder about all the wonderful things that everybody else sees. Automatically, they think about it when they see you like, mm. oh, he did this, he mm. did that. What what, when you do ever just kind of reflect, what are you most proud of? Well, I'm most proud of, um, I'd say, having the opportunity to, to have good friends. Mm -hmm. You know, because so much from my wife, who I met in Marquette, who's from Milwaukee, uh, folks like Congresswoman Moore, where I've had a chance to really be around some good people, some good souls. Yeah. You know, and that's what I'm thankful for. Yeah, because, I mean, meeting good people doesn't happen every day. You meet all kind of people, especially when you're talking you know, about it being, uh, you, you are working know. in law and things of that nature, all kind of things and characteristics come along with it. But to be able to say you've met great Some people that have been around for many years and will be there for years to come is a blessing. No question. Well, thank you. It's thank always you, a pleasure to talk to you. You have so much personality, and oh, I totally you. get why you are as successful as you are. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, thank you for stopping by. Euless Payne Jr. is a managing member of Addison Clifton LLC and a true trailblazer on many levels. It was writer Ralph Waldo Emerson who said, do not go where the pathway may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. That is going to do it for today's show. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. As always, I thank you for watching, and I do hope you join us again next week as we take another look at Our Issues Milwaukee. Have a great day.